What's up Dragon Nation? I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Space Engineers Specialized. Today we're going to be going over a blueprint that you see around me. This is my small ship printer. Now this thing does have a few issues because of some of the updates that Space Engineers has had, but hopefully we can get those issues fixed a little bit. I'll also go ahead and show you guys how you can build this on your own. It, it's kind of complicated, but eh, not, not too much. It, it's all right, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this started All right, so there's this took me a really long time to finalize I built this thing the first time I built this thing the part right here, which is actually uh, small grid blocks was actually a ship that I had to place with connectors. But they changed the way rotors work and you can change the heads to small grid heads. So now I can actually connect this thing so it's a little bit more stable to the station. Because the problem we had with connectors is they wouldn't hold very well when they were locked. I think they changed that in the game where now connectors are very strong when they are locked but this is still a little bit more stable. Now keep in mind, Space Engineers uh, isn't very good when you're using rotors and stuff, so you might see some good explosions. Setup back here is with pistons, which will actually move these wall of welders, which will uh, weld up the small ship. Uh, I have uh, numerous uh, projectors on this thing. Each projector is for one ship. So if I have this thing, I want to use multiple ships. This is the setup I have to have. Also, a ton of timers. I'm going to need more timers on this thing. I need, I need one timer per ship. So yeah, I'm going to have to add about nine more timers to this thing. But I'll go ahead and... I might do it. Before I put this on the Steam Workshop, I might go ahead and add those. I don't know yet. But the way this thing works is it's pretty simple. What we have is, let's go ahead and see if I can find, is it this one? Yeah, it is. If we go ahead and hit that button, as you can see, we do have a projection of the small atmospheric miner. There are a few problems with this setup. One is I need to figure out a way of getting power into this ship. Now this ship is all battery power. So it won't be a big deal, but if I need something with a reactor, I need to be able to get uranium into it. Which is why this whole thing is set up on conveyors. That way I can go ahead and get uranium into the reactor that would be on the ship. Also another thing we need to keep in mind, this thing is not connected to the projection yet because this is where it's gonna connect. What we have is we have a projector for a sprue. Do I have? No, I don't have that set up. Let's go to uh, the projector for the sprue and we'll go ahead and turn that projector back on. So now you can see the sprue. This is how the ship is going to get its uranium, but with the blueprint for the ship, you need to make sure that you do have conveyor system that goes from the sprue to the reactor. So if you do already have ships like this uh, set up and you have them built, you might have to change them just a little bit so you can get uranium into it. This one, all I have to do is we do have a light down here. Uh, what I will probably do is I'll get rid of that light and just put a, uh, let me see if I can find it. This right here. This is a uh, conveyor junction. Uh, we do have access on the connector, small ship connector, right on the side. So I could switch that out for a conveyor junction and I should be able to get uranium into the reactor. So a pretty simple build, that just means I have to make a new blueprint. So now that I have the projection of the ship and I have the projection of the sprue, we need to get this whole thing set up, which will <laughs> come up with a few other problems. Let's go ahead and try this out. What this does is we have a welder right here which will weld up this sprue because these welders will not be able to reach it. 
And if this sprue is not welded up, it will not be connected to the projection of the ship and the ship will not weld. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn on, let me see if I can find that little tiny welder. I think it's that one right there. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And there we go. Now I welded up the sprue. You can see that we do have a gap right here of two blocks. That's one of the things I'm going to have to figure out is I don't think... I think if I drop this projection, it's going to interfere with uh, the conveyor and the welders and the grinder. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go into that projection. I think I called it projection minor. Yep. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go vertical and drop it from negative 9 to negative 7. Two blocks. Let's see. Well, might have clearance. Maybe. But the other thing that might be a problem is the grinder might be too close to the ship when it's finished. So it might grind off some of the blocks from the ship. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and let it run and you can see exactly what it does. So there's also something else that's going to happen that was me just trying to figure out how to get this thing to work. And we'll go over that here pretty soon. So what's going to happen is the pistons are pushing the welders towards the middle of the projection. Then once they get there, the welders will turn on, the pistons will retract, and the welders should weld up the ship as they move. I guess we'll see. Make sure you're doing it when the welders are going back and not going forward, or you'll have all kinds of issues. You might see a pretty good explosion, but hey, we don't want that happening. We want this thing to work properly. So here in a second, we're going to go over how you can build something like this on your own. And there's a few things. There's actually a lot of things you need to keep in mind. So once they come completely together, the welders will turn on. And one of the solutions was having pistons that I call shake pistons will just make the whole thing go up and down. And as you can see, the welders are getting stuck on the blocks that it is building. So that does create a little bit of an issue, but it should work. Maybe. Hopefully it doesn't create too much of a problem. Alright, build up. There you go. I think the ship is done. I think. Yep, I think we're good. So what it's going to do is once it's fully retracted, it will go ahead and shut those welders off. It will also stop the pistons back here from moving. So the whole process for the pistons to come in takes a minute. Then for the whole uh, the welders to go all the way, retract all the way back, it takes another minute. So to build this ship, it takes two minutes, which is a lot faster than doing it by hand. <coughs> Alright, so the welders are off, the pistons have stopped, I think we're good to go. Next thing we need to do is we need to disconnect that ship with the sprue, which is why we got the ground, uh, grinder right there. I have a button set up for that, I think. I think it's that one. Alright, let's see. Yep, as you can see, it ground down some of that ship, which is why I have to raise it just a little bit. So yeah, that... That's going to be an issue, but it's all right. We'll just raise it up. The problem with raising it up, if we go ahead and turn off the grinder and we go into the projector, projector that is projecting that ship and we raise it back up to nine, just like that. Uh, the problem we're going to have is the grinder won't be able to reach all the way up here, so it won't get rid of the sprues that are hanging off of the ship. There's going to be two sprues left. So what I have is the projector for the sprue is also set up on the timer, so it should turn on. Let's see. Yep, there it is. And then when these welders turn on, that welder down there will also turn on at the same time. 
Now, I don't want to be wasting your guys' time for two minutes. So, we'll come back when this is done. Alright, now that it's done, we can go ahead and grind away the sprue. And you'll see that I think this will leave those two pieces of conveyor. Uh, let's go ahead and see. I think it's, yeah, it's that one. So yeah, as you can see, we still have those pieces of conveyor. I could probably drop it down one more. So that way I only have one conveyor stuck. I'm just worried about it grinding away the ship. We should be fine though. Maybe. If I drop it down one more. Let's go ahead and turn that grinder off. So the ship is ready to go because it is... Uh, battery powered but as I said if this is a uranium ship that has a reactor all we have to do is take a conveyor junction put it right next to that access point on the connector and everything on this ship is conveyed up so it would be able to go to the reactor if there was one but now we need to go over how to build the damn thing all right so the first thing we're going to start out with is the platform that is right here so what we're going to do is we're going to take a block go up a little bit so that way we have a little bit of room to maneuver around and see what the hell we're doing also this thing is going to need power so we'll just grab a reactor because we're in creative the reactor doesn't need any uranium it will power it just fine so the next thing you have to figure out is how big you want the platform to be. Now the way I set it up is I just needed enough space for any ship that I might put in here. I thought that five blocks would be enough. So we have a space of one, two, three, four, and five. So let's go ahead and set up, set this up real quick so I can build this a little bit faster. There we go. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Next thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need space for the welders and the pistons. Now to put this on the Steam Workshop, I'm not gonna be putting these pistons on, so you guys can probably figure out the solution yourselves. Uh, but the, I need to figure out where the conveyor is gonna go for the uh, pistons to connect to. So, welders are two blocks long, pistons fully retracted are two blocks long, and then we have the conveyor. So, what we have is welder is two blocks, piston two blocks, and this is where the conveyor is going to go. Next thing we need to figure out is how long this thing is going to be. So, in order to fit this in the tunnel and make it look somewhat decent with the uh, blast doors, uh, that's just so that way I could get blocks up against the welders and the blast doors because they have that small uh, collision mesh those uh, Those welders will be able to move without too much interference from say if I had a full block there Which would cause all kinds of problems So what I have is we have a wall of welders, which is seven long so I want to extend it one more block on each side so I can go ahead and put those blast doors. So what we have is we already have one block, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the two blocks on the end. Now we can go ahead and connect that one together. If it work. There we go. Alright, so the Let's see, how am I gonna do this? the best way of explaining how to do this so now we need to set up the conveyor system now this system right here has two pistons that are holding up those welders it might work with just one piston but I go ahead and do two pistons just to make sure just to be on the safe side so what we have is conveyor junction there and a conveyor junction there so this part right here is going to be the floor of the printer. But we'll go ahead and just completely fill it out. So what I need is I'm going to need a little bit of space for the pistons to go that way and for all the welders. So we're going to go up 
Uh, one more block. Let me go ahead and put this right here so I can get rid of this block and put conveyor junctions here. Now we can get rid of those ones. Alright, now we can go ahead and set up the pistons and if I set up the distance right, they should go in without too much of a problem. So we'll grab a piston, we'll put in two on one side and the other two are already built because we're in symmetry mode. Next thing we need to do is going to be a little bit more, little bit more difficult. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that we still have access on the back for the welders. As you can see, we do have access on the back, but we're also going to have welders on the side. So what I need to do is I need to turn the access point to the side, just like that. That way, all these welders will connect. Now here's another problem that will come up is I want to be able to put a welder right here but as you can see we cannot connect it because it's too close to the blocks for the platform. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get rid of the platform blocks. And now I should be able to place them. Hopefully. Let's go ahead and make a little bit more space just in case. All right, now that we have the space, I might need to move that one too, but let's see if it's going to work out. Yep, we can place them. All right, so here's the next problem that we're going to have. As you can see, these welders did not uh, actually connect because this is a separate grid from the rest of the station. So we won't be able to do symmetry mode unless we're in on the same grid. So we'll just go ahead and place these as well. Now as you could also see is I don't have welders in the middle. What I need to do is I need to make sure that those two pistons are connected so that way we could have a wall that moves at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab merge block. Hopefully I didn't grab a modded one. Make sure that we have it turned this way. Then put our blocks and the next merge block is going to go right here. Let's get rid of that block so stuff doesn't screw up. So now what we need to do is we need to extend this piston. So reverse. Now we can go ahead and put those blocks but we need to be careful that we're not uh, pushing against those ones. Which I think we should be good. We should be fine. Go ahead and turn that merge block. Now we can go ahead and reverse the piston. And once that is fully reversed, I can go ahead and place the welders right in the middle, which will connect all these together. There we go. Now I can go ahead and get rid of these blocks. And the piston should be one... This whole wall should be one grid, hopefully. Next thing we got to worry about is these welders at the bottom are not connected to the conveyor system, which is where we need to get our components for them to weld up a ship. So all we have to do is just put conveyors right here. So now, there we go. Turn green. There you go. So now the bottom welders are connected to the top welders, which should allow the components to get through so you can build the ship. So now what we need to do is we need to get this side done. Alright, so now that we have those done, what we need to do is we need to set those pistons up on a group so that they move at the same time. We also need to set the distance and everything, so we'll call these, uh, we'll just call them pistons, since in this design they're going to be the only ones. Then we need to set up those pistons. Uh, velocity, in order to weld a projection up safely, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and put them all the way down. Now this is creative, so it is going to weld up a little bit faster, but in survival, those welders are going to be a lot slower. So we need to make sure that the pistons are pretty damn slow. Also, 
They're going to go a little bit too far right now. I think it's actually... If we go into those pistons, they're going to collide. What we need to do is we need to set the max distance to... Five? Maybe? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Alright, so they stop. That is five right there. It isn't quite close enough. Let's go ahead and change that to... I think it's six. Uh, six. There we go. Now let's see if they actually touch. Probably also not a good idea to have them touch, but I think we'll be safe. We'll be fine. Alright, there we go. Now they're actually touching. Let's go ahead and reverse those, and then we'll go over the next thing that we have to worry about. Alright, so now that we have the uh, setup for the welder wall, we need to get the setup for the projections. So this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, you guys might have seen in the episode on that I did on projectors, in order to project a small ship, you need a small ship grid projector. Projector! Okay, that, that's confusing me. So I know it's confusing you. You need a small grid projector in order to project a small ship. So what we have to do is we have to change the large grid into a small grid, which we're going to be doing with broders for a number of different reasons. One, it's a little bit more stable than connectors. Also, it will provide power to this entire setup. So it used to be I would build a ship which was kind of set up like this, but there were thrusters and connectors on the bottom. Let me go ahead and get rid of these blocks so you guys can see what's going on there. A little bit easier to see. And yeah, let's get rid of these two. So what I used to have was I had connectors right here on the bottom, and then I would just connect these conveyors up down about right here, and then put connectors on those as well. Now the problem with that was trying to set up the spacing. When you uh, lock connectors, there's still a little bit of a gap, and it's really hard to get the proper spacing. What I need is because we have this moving wall of welders, I need to make sure that that system in there does not come above these blocks right here or they're going to interfere with the collision mesh of the welders. So that's why I went ahead and used rotors. Now of course you can set this up however you want. Uh, this is just the way that I do it. So a couple things you need to keep in mind when you're trying to do something like this is the spacing. That's why I had to do this thing as wide as I did because if I would have moved this rotor in one more block, that is a large grid rotor. Now, large grids are five small grids. Okay, <laughs> let me let me see if I can explain that. Let's go. Let's go with you. Now, if I go across this large block, that's actually going to be five small blocks. But the conveyors in the large the large small grade conveyors which we have right here they are three blocks three by three so with that rotor right there it is going to be a little bit bigger than each one of these blocks so I had to make sure that the spacing was right which is why it has to be as long as it is because this is the only way that I could get the right spacing to fit all this stuff in and I absolutely need all of it then the next thing I had to worry about was the spacing for the welders and the grinders. The welders need to be close enough so they could weld up that sprue. And the grinder had to be far enough back that it wouldn't grind down the welder. And this is the spacing that I had. It, it, it took me a minute to figure out that spacing. Now you'll also notice that this thing is set up on a rotor. That's also very important because a grinder will not grind the same grid. So if I had this grinder and that rotor wasn't there and the grinder was just attached to there, it would not grind that sprue. It has to be a separate grid. So now that it's on a rotor and the rotor head is a separate grid, now the grinder could grind away that sprue. Looks like it's on the same grid, but it is not. So the spacing right here is extremely important between the two rotors or you won't have enough room to get everything connected. 
You could mess around with it a little bit and see if you can figure it out. But don't really need to because we do... It's okay to have a little bit of space when you're building crap like this. So... Let's go ahead and see if we can get this built. Alright, so the space that we're going to need is seven blocks. But what I need to do is I need to add... Uh, I'm going to need to pass components and stuff through uh, uranium also through this entire system. That's why we have to use conveyors. So I need to make sure that I have a conveyor system set up to put the rotors on. Problem is, if I get rid of that block right there, this whole thing's going to fall. So let's go ahead and put those there. Now we can go ahead and put the conveyor and we're good. Also, now that I have these uh, welders together, if I wanted to, I could add more welders out this way, which I'm going to do. This is going to be seven welders long wall and on the other side as well. Also, if I really wanted to, I can make an even taller wall and add an entire row of welders. Just make sure that you connect that uh, row of welders to the row below it. Oh, that's something I forgot to do, actually. So let's go ahead and add those in. There we go. So right here, we have a gap of seven blocks, which is just perfect. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. We're actually going to need to lower the conveyor just a little bit. So I think I did it wrong. Yep. See, as I said before, we need this entire setup to be below these blocks. So I need to actually lower without actually destroying the entire thing. That's going to be a solid block and... Oh, let's put you there. And conveyor. There we go. And then this one is a solid block. There we go. So, solid block and then conveyor junction. So now that we have the right spacing, I think, let's get rid of you and you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, I think that's right. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and add the rotors. So advanced rotor. Because we need the uh, components to be able to pass through. One on this side, one on that side. Then we'll go ahead and delete the heads. So that way we can go ahead and put small heads on them. Now, remember, we're in creative, so things are a lot different than they would be in survival. So we're going to go ahead and add small head. And then on the second one, add small head. If we were in survival, we would have to weld those up because we're not. We don't. They just pop right in. So this is why I had to use the large uh, small grid conveyors because of the rotor head. As you can see, it's large access and not a small one. But now what I need to figure out is I need to figure out the spacing for all the conveyors. What I really need is I need a conveyor junction right here in the middle. So that way, if I bring you over here, there's the uh, conveyor junction right there, and the conveyor junctions have small access on the side, which is where we have the sprue, which will allow us to pass uranium into a ship if needed. So the spacing is going to be a little bit difficult, but we should, should be able to do it. Shouldn't be too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a conveyor junction because we do need this thing to go up just a little bit. Uh, we need to make sure that the access points are on the side because we're going up and we're going in this way. So I don't need the small access points. They need to stay out of the way. Uh, then we're going to have another conveyor junction. And what we're going to do is because of the spacing where the welder has to be, we're going to go ahead and go one more conveyor junction in from the front. Right there. All right, I think we got the spacing. Uh, what we need now is we need regular conveyor. And we'll just bring it close enough to the middle until we can get that conveyor junction, which is about right here. 
But as you can see, the conveyor junction is going to be a little bit bigger than that hole. And it's also a little bit too big for one full conveyor. So what we're going to do is we're going to use conveyor frames to uh, close that gap. So I think it might be two. Let's see. Oh, no, I need to make sure that thing is right in the middle or resources will not pass through. So now we can go ahead and put in the conveyor junction. But with this one, we need to make sure that the uh, small access grids or the small access is pointing that way. It has to be on the top and it has to be going from the back to the front. The good thing about that is if we do change the layout of the conveyors, I can go ahead and put the sprue on any one of these access points. So that is the middle of the welder. So it looks like this one right here. So we'll go ahead and put the sprue here. Actually, let me do it this way. Uh, this way I could actually connect the projectors to it as well. So we need to go up too high with the sprue. There we go. Now we have that set up. Now if we go ahead and grab a block, you'll notice that it will not connect to the regular conveyors. It will connect, however, to the conveyor junction. This is where we need our projectors and timers. That's why I went ahead and put a conveyor junction right there because it will attach to it. So the next step we need to do is we need to make sure this entire thing is on the same grid. As you can see, we do have a little bit of a gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn one of the rotors 45 degrees. So we'll go with the first one. We'll go ahead and set up the upper limit to 45. Set the lower limit to zero because we need to come back to zero at some point and then we'll just go ahead velocity one so we'll wait for that to turn 45 degrees there it goes now what we need to do is we need to get merge blocks and connectors lined up uh just merge blocks sorry not connectors uh let's try right there in the middle so we'll come out a little bit so that way we have a little bit more room with the merge block because being on a small grid, it is going to... Oh, no, I need to go... Yeah, you need to go up like that. Uh, because the merge blocks are a little bit smaller and they're a little bit thinner, they're a little bit more difficult to connect. So what I'm doing by extending it out is giving it a little bit more of an angle when those merge blocks do try to connect. So how far did we come out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll go to this one, we'll go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also, what I need to do is right now the merge block would be in line with this one. What I need it to do is I need it to be one block above. So we'll come up one. Actually, I need we need to be right in the middle too, so I need to come out two more blocks as well. So one, two. So we'll go ahead and bring those blocks come on there you go and make sure that it is even is it that one no it's that one make sure that it is even with that merge block as well now we go ahead and turn this merge block down and we can go ahead and turn that rotor back to zero and it should connect if I laid everything correctly all right reverse And it looks like we are good. All we're looking for now is for those conveyors to turn green. There we go. Now they're fully connected. We can go ahead and get rid of these. So now what you have is you have a stable system. So just in case uh, those uh, welders up there hit this grid, which it will when the sprue is fully extended, it will be hitting them a little bit you have a stable system that won't get a mess around too much. All right, the rest of this I'm gonna do on my own, but I'll show you what I'm doing, is the spacing is extremely important. What we need is I need the sprue to be built to where these welders can build the ship. So the sprue has to go up to 
Uh, let's see. Three. I have to make sure that the sprue does get welded to about at least right there. No, right there. Because I need to make sure that these welders over here will uh, weld up the rest of it. So I think that would be right. But I also need to make sure that that welder will weld this entire sprue. That's why I went ahead and raised it up just a little bit. It should be good enough to weld that sprue up and I think the height would be... Yeah, I think the height will only go up to about right there. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out when we get into survival. Uh, probably next episode of our survival, I'll, I'll get this thing set up. <coughs> now, the grinder I had to make a little bit taller, so that way... Uh, the grinder has a little bit more area of effect than the welder does, so it can be back a little bit. Also, I need to make sure that it was kind of in the middle of the sprues. So that way it doesn't grind the ship, it doesn't grind those welders, and it doesn't grind any of the blocks down here. So the spacing was exactly three blocks, so I didn't have to put any conveyor frames. And I showed you guys earlier why this had to be on rotor. One thing I do have right here is I do have a uh, conveyor frame for the gap. It just brings the uh, grinder a little bit closer to the sprue. So that's pretty much the setup. It's pretty simple. So for the welder, we just come to the second conveyor junction from the rotor, or the welder. <laughs> for the welder, goddamn English. For the welder, we come in from one conveyor junction. We come to the second one that is connected to the rotor. Uh, two conveyor frames, then an elbow, and then the welder. For the grinder, we come back to uh, the conveyor junction connected to the back rotor. We go one conveyor up, then an elbow, then a conveyor frame, the rotor, which is fully extended. The offset on the rotor is full, and then a grinder. Let me actually make sure. Let's check that rotor real quick. I think it's that one. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but we'll check. I think... Where are you? Rotor displacement is maxed. Yep, I was right. And that's pretty much how we get that set up. Now, I'm not going to go into how I build that or I'm not going to build it with you guys. Not only to save a little bit of time, but you might not use this system. There are a few different ways of doing this. This is my way. This is how I do it. But anyways, now that we have that, there's a few other things that we need to uh, go ahead and get together, which I can show you guys right here. Uh, well, some of it over there, some of it over here. Uh, so the first thing I need to show you is if we put down a full block for the bottom right here, as you can see, it interferes with the welders and it pushes them up. See? So we can't have moving items on those welders. Or we can't have moving items on these blocks. So what we could do is we go ahead and use blast door blocks. Let me see if I can find... There it is. Now the blast door blocks, if we go ahead and bring one down here, it gives us a little tiny gap. As you can see, it's not as big as a full block. So that way... The collision mesh of the blast doors is not interfering with the collision mesh of the uh, welders. Now, with the system I have over here, I do have this set up on pistons, so there is a tiny little gap. So I was able to put full blocks. And if I could get this... Come on. There you go. As you can see, there is enough of a gap that there is no collision and it doesn't create a problem but as you guys saw this piston system that goes up and down is not going to work because they changed the way the collision mesh works in the game so now even though the object is far away from the welder tips it's still going to cause those welders to get stuck and it's going to warp those pistons 
So I don't think this system is going to work in survival. I don't know. We'll work it out. But the reason that I had to use that was in survival, the welders have been nerfed so badly that if you look right here, from that welder tip to that welder tip, there's a really big gap. Now the area of effect, it only comes to about right here. So there's going to be one gap or a one block gap or one small grid block gap uh, in between those welders, which means half this ship will not be welded up if it is a full block. So it looks like that conveyor junction would not weld up. These thrusters right here would not weld up. The blocks back here would not weld up just in this half row right here. Luckily, the batteries are a little bit bigger, so they would weld up. Uh, the thrusters are bigger, so they would weld. And the uh, drill is a little bit bigger, so it would weld also. But it would just be that one row right there. If it's a full block, it would not weld up. So what I had to try to figure out was a way to move those welders so that it would weld those blocks. And this was what I came up with so far. But because of how janky the collision mesh is in the game, it, it creates a few problems. Uh, eh, just irritating as hell. Even though the tips are not touching anything, the way they have the collision set up, is there will still be a gap between a block and the tips. But just because of the way the collision mesh is done, it will cause those welders to not be able to move. It's kind of a issue. It's it's something I've had trouble with on trying to get this thing uh, created. I mean, it worked fine back in the day, and it is really cool that they changed the rotors so now we can put small heads on them, so I could build this system, which is a little bit more stable. But the change of the collision mesh has messed with those welders just a little bit. So the system is kind of janky now. Uh, this solution doesn't really work. It, I mean, you would think it would, but it doesn't. But it's alright. What I'm going to do is we're going to save this blueprint right here. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on the Steam Workshop so you guys can go ahead and check it out. Uh, this one over here I think I'll put into our survival world once I get it done. And when we get into survival, probably what I'll do is I'll set up a uh, projector. So that way I could get everything measured out and where everything needs to go. I will have to rebuild the subgrids, unfortunately. So anything that is connected to a rotor head and everything that is connected to a piston head. Using projector, I'm going to have to rebuild those because projectors don't project subgrids. Which is alright. It, it, it's a little bit of work, but not too much. So the next thing about this thing is, and I know this episode is getting pretty damn long, is what's going to happen is I want this to be set up on buttons so I don't have to mess with the system at all. So what we're going to have is uh, the timers are going to be set up to each... Alright, each projector is going to have... or... God damn it. Okay, one timer is going to have every projector on it. Now what it's going to do is, let's say that timer is for the miner up here. What it's going to do is it's going to make sure that the sprue projection is on. It's going to make sure that the uh, projection for the ship is on. And it'll shut off every other projection. And then the next timer will do the same thing. It'll have a different ship. It'll turn on the projection for whatever ship I decide, it'll turn on the sprue projection, but it will turn every other one off. That way, I can set it up on a selection button system. So if I decide that I don't want the miner, I'm going to go back to another ship, I would hit that button, and that ship would project. It would turn that one off. So the welder walls only take three timers. You have one timer, which will extend the pistons. It takes one minute. Uh, the next timer, which will turn the welders on and retract the uh, pistons. And then after another minute, it'll turn those welders off. So that only required three timers. 
So I need... All together, I think this is going to take about 12 timers because I have nine different ships I can project. The reason I chose nine is because the timers can only hold nine projectors. Let me... Ah, uh, that's going to confuse the shit out of me. So let's go ahead and go into the timer. And we'll go to set up actions. As you can see down in the toolbar, there are, o are only nine spaces. That's why I can only do nine ships. Which is okay. Actually, no, it's eight because of sprue. That's right. It would be eight ships. But eight ships is plenty considering I only have like three or four ships that I would use this system with. Anyways, I know this episode is getting pretty long. It's probably going to be close to an hour by the time we get it. Uh, so I'm going to get this on the Steam Workshop so you guys can spawn it in. Remember, if you want to check it out and see how everything works, you have to spawn it in in Creative. If you try to do it in a projector, it will not project the small grids. So if you're just trying to check it out and see how it works, go ahead and go into a Creative world like I'm in right now and just spawn it in. So hopefully that helped you guys figure out how to build one of these on your own. And hopefully you're not pissed off that the episode was so long. But there was a lot to go over with this thing. I mean, it takes a lot to get this built. And I think altogether it took me... Uh, I think the first time I built this, the first uh, prototype of it was like three years ago. Four, maybe. So yeah, this is something I've been working on for that freaking long. But anyways... <laughs> I definitely need to end the episode. I've been up. I just got off work. I'm tired of shit, so I'm ranting. But anyways, make sure to like and subscribe. All that good stuff. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.